Hi friends, I hope you're having a lovely day today. Today I want to talk about depth and, and dimensionality in photography. And uh, I've spoke about this many times before. When I say dimensionality and depth, I mean, I mean compositionally speaking. So not so much like the emotional nature of your photo so much. Uh, although I guess they could sort of cross over. I'm speaking to, to compositionally arranging elements in a way that creates this sense of depth. I believe that creating a sense of depth in your photography is important. That's why I talk about it so much. I think that it is a way to create an immersive dynamic that the mind will naturally want to engage in. And not only is it, is it pleasing, it is a way to create context. I believe the most prominent and prolific way to create a sense of depth is is by by layering, by by uh, by stacking elements. Uh, you you know foreground, middle ground, background. When this is done skillfully and thoughtfully, it the end result is this wonderfully immersive image. One example of how I've used layering recently is in this photo at the train station. Uh, that you you have the train in the foreground, you have the train in the background, and in the middle you have this uh, this woman walking by. This stacking along with the dynamic of the lighting made for a pleasing and immersive result. Another fantastic way to create depth is to use people. We as humans intuitively know how big people are. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a thing we're good at. An example of this principle of play is a photo I captured at a ski resort recently. Uh, you can see how, how tiny this person is in the photo. It gives you a sense, an intuitive sense of the scale of his environment. You wouldn't have that if he was not in this photo. Here we have another example of layering by photographer and vlogger Ben Brown. And he chose to put the, the tail end of the helicopter in the shot, in the foreground, to 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 make make you understand how far away from the ground you are and and how how far the MetLife building is from you and and this overall sense of Im immersive depth and and thereness really like <laughs> you, you it's it, there's a there's a different vibe about this photo than if it was just another shot of the New York skyline you can feel yourself flying in the helicopter. You can feel yourself hovering over all of these, these buildings in a very three-dimensional way. Another interesting way to create a sense of depth is by using, by using atmosphere, by using, so fog. Uh, it's going out, you know, getting up at four or five o'clock in the morning and, and taking photos of, of a mountain in fog or a cityscape in fog, or, you know, street photographers around here. Um, people and then the city in the background is kind of fogged out and it creates the, we, we intuitively know what fog means that means that that's further away as, as something fades into to a less contrasty version of itself and mistiness <laughs> um, we engage with that on a very visceral level also snow is another example of this taking a long lens zooming in shooting through snow creates this interesting dynamic one example of fogginess used well is this photo here where we have of course the brooklyn bridge and it the brooklyn bridge feels massive and a little bit terrifying only because of this this haze this covering it and this 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 daunting atmosphere the final photo I want to look at that fantastically demonstrates using layering and people is this one. We have all seen this photo of, of, of Horseshoe Bend and uh, the Grand Canyon. We've all seen it shot <laughs> mostly the same way. This photographer decided to do something pretty interesting. Um, he decided to have somebody sit down at the edge of the cliff and having this person and having her be right there and having the background shoot out into the distance in the way that it does creates a whole do a whole <laughs> a whole new dynamic for for this iconic location i've lived in utah long enough to know that this feels so much more gigantic when you're there <laughs> than than a photograph will often imply. And using this person as an anchor point and as, as a, a, a depth creator <laughs> helps, 
helps aid our brains in understanding how big it felt, how big it feels to stand there. Okay, that's it. There, was, there are all sorts of dynamic directions we, we could have gone with that, but I just wanted to touch on it today. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for watching if you made it this far. Engage below, I'll engage back. You have a lovely day. Thank you for watching. Goodbye!